verse number 14 deva dvija guru prajna pujanam shauchya marjavam brahmacharya mahim samcha shariram tap ucchate so the verse is supposed to be taken together देवतेज गुरु प्राज्ञ पूजन शौच मार्जव ब्रह्मचर्यमहिंसा च शारीर तप उच्य सो दट मीन्स आज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ श्रद्धा we are supposed to cover different types of shraddha and already we have covered ahara and yajna so after discussing ahara and yajna then here it comes tapas so so far we have seen this both ahara and yajna based on guna but here tapas is big divided little differently two levels first is karana drushtya then comes guna drushtya so when we say karana drushtya means based on the instruments that means the organs with which we practice tapas so general translation of tapas is called austerity but we say we fully when you are able to withdraw yourself that is called tapas so your will is involved to find out whether you have mastery over your sense organs or not that's why externally if you observe there is no difference between fasting and starving so both the party let us say are not taking food but there is a difference so what is the difference the one who is starving has no choice there is no will involved whereas the one who is fasting there is will involved so externally even though both looks alike but internally there is be difference so that's why whenever the word tapas comes we carefully translate as self discipline rather ost how here when tapas is being divided firstly karana drushtya so karana means instrument the organs by the help of which one practices tapas so you can say organ based classification and of course it has been classified into three categories one is called kaikam second one is called vajikam third one is called manasa so kaikam means physical related to physical body then vajikam related to speech and 
manasa means related to mind and of course lord krishna again is going to talk after dividing this into this karana drishtya from the standpoint of karanam the instrument later on it will say guna drishtya means sattvik rajasik and tamasik now first let us look at this karana drishtya trividh tapah so that means if we look at says beautifully this verse directly that all sort of puja comes under kaika tapas so any ritual one does it will come under kaika tapas physical austerity why and how first of all when a person does puja the alasyam the laziness of the person goes away and the laziness is in three levels mind lazy speech lazy and of course body lazy and interestingly through puja all sort of laziness is taken care that's why when we do puja we fix the time not when i get up or when i feel like you understand it doesn't to work do you know very nicely that previous comes that the previous version vidihinam asushthanam mantrahinam adakshinam shraddha vidhatyam yagyam tamasam parichakshate so in that i can say we have very nicely do you know those who chant this vishnu sahasrana finally what they will say ram rameti ha 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 finally varanane so what a horse is there okay very nice because somehow i like that you know that horse to remember because really one should remember that horse uh, you know shri ram ram rameti ram rami varanane sahasra nama tatulyam ram nama varanane so those who cannot chant vishnu sahasra nam suppose you are occupied you don't have much time so you can chant this line three times the punyam is equivalent to chanting complete vishnu sahasra nam same thing for lalita sahasra nam also we have okay so for everything there is a shot cut now if a person always adopts the shortcuts <laughs> shri ram 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 eti ram ram varanane sahasranam tatulyam ram nam varanane i have chanted vishnu sahasranam i have chanted lalita sahasranam i have chanted all sahasranam remember the laziness in my mind is going to increase smartness of the my mind of course is going to be stronger no doubt in it so here we say puja means it is supposed to be done in a given time so the time has to be fixed so then only it will remove the laziness you know in those days i have we had this a television okay so television was having big tummy <laughs> but our tummies were flat you understand because why you have to get up tune changing the channel you have to and come back and sit now this what we have a remote ting tang now it also you don't need remote you need phone okay with the, with the phone you can do everything now tvs have become flat 
बट टॉमीज आर कंप्लीटली टी वी यू अंडरस्टैंड सो दिस इज नथिंग बट बिकॉज ऑफ लेजीनेस एंड ऑफकोर्स इन पूजा यू हैव लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स इंक्लूडिंग यू हैव टू गेट अप मेनी टाइम्स डू नमस्कार प्रदक्षिणा so that also takes care of your physical laziness and of course when you start chanting you have to remember this mantra that mantra combining swaras everything put together that also takes care of your mental laziness sorry uh, verbal laziness and of course along with that mental laziness and of course we didn't have this sort of you know this morning work now it is a morning work association okay everywhere you don't have to because what was earlier practices because people are supposed to go to the temple so when go to the temple in satvika time because whole day also is divided first few hours are satvik next few hours are rajasik and last towards evening called tamasic hours that's why evening hours all processions and everything happens in the temples so one is supposed to go to the temple in the morning so when you go to the morning of course seeing the temples when you do pradakshinam one round or two rounds or maybe one round three rounds seven rounds what happens your morning work is done perfectly <laughs> you don't need and that to wear feet with good vibe at least you don't have to look at whether dog seat is there or some other seat is there you understand <laughs> how so the first thing is puja helps us to overcome to manage or to get rid of our alasyam the second point of puja is that which i personally feel is most important for all of us it is a beautiful method to revive our relationship with the lord because in our life with whom shall we live we stay we have a relationship and for every relationship we spare our time and when we don't spare our time we don't relate properly you know what happens but remember all the relationship that we have where we are spending time are called secondary relationship with a person whether it's your father mother your wife husband lover beloved child friends whatever whom so go is it 10 20 30 40 years of relationship whereas the prime relationship please understand primary relationship is with god so that be the universal relationship that being the primary relationship am i not supposed to spare time do that's why we say very carefully because in every janma not in this janma only janma's birth in every janma i am related to lord especially the relationship is what karya karana sambandha i am the product the god He is the source, the cause, the cause and the product relationship. It's like the cloth is connected all the time 
with the cotton, with the thread. Even a cloth does not want to announce. So also I am always connected to the Lord. That's why it is my primary relationship. So that's why all the time I need to be very careful. And thirdly, when you look at Puja helps to become humble by expressing gratitude. So when I do Puja, whether I like it or not, I have to bend down. Like, you know, especially in Rishikesh, we have a beautiful observation. I was talking to somebody, especially in these Vedanta ashrams, including our ashram, don't worry. When any Brahmachari or anybody comes to study Vedanta, so first time when they come to ashram, very nicely, you know, they do proper namaskaram and in fact bend down. After one month, bending down, forget, then it will come to. Then, slowly, after three months, the head will be on the chest. Means we say called Pohans Gya Mahatma. <laughs> Already, person has achieved, <laughs> reached. Then finally, just smile, head. Then after that, means already reveling in the Brahman, okay? <laughs> no humility at all. Whereas if you go to this bhakti-based ashrams, what they do, what they don't do is not a point for me. Point is, at least physically they bend down. Prabhuji, that's a big thing, which is nice, which is good. So what I'm trying to say is that when a person does puja, at least learns to express gratitude in the process, develops what? Develops humility. And of course, when a person does puja, the clarity in thinking takes place. Why? Because puja involves cleanliness. Starting with body and of course speech and mind. That's why we have, you know, after taking shower, changing the cloth and all these things, then comes what? Still for mantra snanam, abhavitra, pavitrova. Then ajudayanam, anantayanam, three times that we do to do the antasuddhi. Still we are not sure, then do the pranayam. So when all these rituals, vidhis, the systems, that is that are involved in puja takes care of the cleanness because wherever there is a cleanness, their mind starts working systematically. You can see for yourself. Starting with table, I see for me always in the computer. So computer desktop full of files. What happens? What to do, what not to do? Which file is open, you continue. Other file, you don't bother. You understand? Same thing also if the house is a mess. How can your thinking be systematic? So that's why puja helps your mind to become systematic. So that's why cleanliness helps mind to become systematic. And of course, through puja, one becomes a stable person. Because the person understands that 
I have an ultimate backup. So when you understand there is something, there is someone, there is somebody who is my ultimate backup, will you be bothered? Will you feel disturbed? Definitely not. There is a beautiful story goes like this. A young couple thought of going, let us say, for their honeymoon. And they had to take the help of a fairy. And of course, when they are in the middle of the river, a particular storm came and it was disturbing too much. All were scared. But this young man was sitting very comfortable. Newly married wife, without understanding him much, was worried, what is happening? Is he okay? Mentally okay or not? What is happening? No disturbance, nothing. In fact, goes and shakes. So still, this man sits perfectly. The woman went crazy. That means maybe I am married to a wrong person. Mentally challenged, who knows what. And you know, women, they cannot keep quiet, whether it's right time or wrong time. Okay? So they want to find out that they are always right, others are wrong. I don't know from where the gene comes, okay? <laughs> However, this young woman tried to say him, I would like to know what is happening to you. And of course, the young man got some sharp thing which, which were nearby, just caught hold of the lady, this young woman called wife, caught hold of her head and tried to put that sharp knife near the neck. Now what happens to the lady? Was in the first instant was second, but next time did not move, did not bother. Because this is called Sarina. Then this man said, why are you not moving? Why are you not scared? The woman said, after all you are my husband. I know you will not kill me. I know you love me. Me being part of you, part of your life, you will never kill me. And when I, first time I was shocked because I didn't relate with you, the moment I understood, oh, oh you are my husband, you will never do this, I don't bother. That time this person dropped it, smiling said, same thing happens to me. When I am related to the God, to the Lord, to the universal law, and if there is storm, I know God is going to take care. Why should I bother? Let it happen, whatever to happen. That is called relationship. How? So, Lord also takes care of this. So, through puja, we do take care of this aspect. That's why we do follow a lot of procedures and most important thing is also through puja the social unification also happens. You start socializing, you try to present yourself in a better way. That's why we come together through the puja. That's why if you observe, all pujas are being designed in such a way when the market is lazy, <laughs> supposed to be. But of course, in Hinduism, puja was different, in other religions, it's different. Let me start with Hinduism. If you observe, in Dakshinayana, now more pujas are there. Than Uttarayana. Do you know why? Because in Dakshinayana, lot of activities people do. So that you should not, because harvesting, lot of things are there. People are engaged. 
So that is a process that you become a mechanical person. You may get tired, exhausted. That's why puja comes to socialize, to share. It's a very amazing way of doing it. That's why also in Christianity, the Christmas Eve was imagined because they know that during this 25th and of course towards end, the whole market because of snow and whatnot, everything is all the way around. So this is the time to put this Christmas, the birthday of Jesus, which was not there as you know, just 250 years old, this method. Earlier it was not there at all. It started from London. The king, twice, two kings, they were coronated on such a, that day, so then they adopted this method. I am not talking about, okay, history talks. So that means it's very clear, the puja helps at least social unification. With this, I think, let us look at the verse. So first he says, to whom to do puja? So he says, look, first is Deva, Dvija, Guru, Pragya, Poojanam. Worship of the God. Okay, you may say, I understand. Worshipping God, because you talk a lot. But why you say this God and already there are so many gods we have discussed. 330 million based on sattvic, rajasic and tamasic aspect. So how do you present that? We say very clearly God is really formless. But the problem is we cannot relate with all pervading formless Lord. So because we cannot relate, especially in our crucial time, especially when I am disturbed, so I cannot relate with the formless, all-pervasive Lord. That's why I relate with an idol who represents the formless. That's why we say we relate with a given aspect of Lord. That's why we have different types of Lord. For example, if a person is going through a lot of fear, panic attack, or enemy fear, we say you can worship Hanuman. Because today is Tuesday, his day, okay, that's why. So, the moment you start, do you know, worshipping Hanuman, even if just Hanuman Chalisa or whatever, Hanuman Stava, so automatically it becomes easier, your things comes down. Because you relate that aspect. So, that's why, Whenever we worship our Ishta Devata, we say what? The form that I like. Ishta Devata means the form I like. That means what? The aspect that is lacking in me is being visualized in a given form. So that's why we say very carefully, we need to do Puja, a lord in a given form, have idol, spend doing puja, you will see a big difference in you. Then the second one is called Dvija. So Dvija means generally called the Brahmins. Actually, maybe I should translate a little differently here. Dvija means 
ट्वाइस बॉर्न so when we say twice born what it means here is the one who follows dharmic life the one who knows shastra so here divija represents shastram so that means what when a person follows shastra so definitely we need to respect we need to worship so indirectly we are valuing shastra worshiping shastra so that you don't develop ego that's why you can see big big when they go to the temple or when they call the priest to their house to do the puja at least that time they have to do namaskaram properly even if the priest is very young is amazing even if priest is 11 years let us say 12 year old boy just has become in priest but this person is 70 year old very rich very powerful but has to do you know do proper namaskaram and asking or waiting for ashirvadam akshat so that at least we learn not to develop our ego so we handle that then comes guru pujanam so guru pujanam means starting from your mother father also the one who taught you alphabets in the schools and finally atma gyana guru the one who taught you this atma gyana self knowledge so that means what so in short starting with what paravidya aparavidya to aparavidya and paravidya both and finally says pragya pujanam iti so pragya means a wise person gyani purusha ityartha that's why bija pragya there is deeper so bija means one who is dharmic here pragya means the one who is dharmic also having brahma vidya both so that means what this is called what called tapas and of course we'll see saucham arjavam at least with this what happened to you know first thing is i don't know whether anything happens or not through the puja one thing is your cholesterol gets reduced there are two types of cholesterol okay one is cholesterol in the blood cholesterol in the mind <laughs> i personally feel the cholesterol in mind is more dangerous than the cholesterol in the blood more of it we'll see tomorrow please om om purnamada purnamidam purna purnamutachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vishishyate om shanti shanti shanti